Hobbies. A lot of people have hobbies. Hobbies are interesting things that people like to do in their spare time. My father has a hobby. He has a model railroad set that he put together. A tiny electric train runs through make-believe villages and travels through tunnels and over mountains. My father also enjoys sailing. He has a real sailboat that he takes us out on. He is teaching me how to sail. I like to collect things. I collect comic books, stamps, and coins. I trade comic books with some of my friends, and sometimes I buy comic books at stores. Some of the very old comic books are worth a lot of money. I have stamps from all over the world. Whenever any of my friends get a letter from a faraway place, they save the stamps for me. I have stamps from England, Japan, Australia, and even Russia. I use a magnifying glass to look at the stamps, and I keep them in a special album. I don't have too many coins yet, but I have a very old dime from Canada, and I have a coin with a hole in it from Africa. My mother used to collect dolls when she was a little girl. The dolls wore costumes from different countries. My friend John's hobby is painting. He does oil painting. He has even sold some of his paintings. He is a good artist. My friend Linda sews. She has made clothes for herself and some of her friends. Maybe Linda will be a fashion designer when she gets older. Sometimes people's hobbies lead them into their careers. Christmas. In December, Christmas comes. We get a holiday from school, and our parents get a few days off from work. Our family gets ready for Christmas by decorating the house. We decorate inside and out. On the outside of the house, we put up lights that twinkle and glow. We have a wooden Santa Claus and a reindeer set that my father puts up on the roof. Inside, we put up a Christmas tree. Some years we have a real tree. Real pine trees smell nice, but you have to be careful that they don't dry out and start a fire. This year we have an artificial tree. We hang tinsel and ornaments on the tree. We also hang strands of light on the tree and put a star at the top. Everyone thinks that the tree is beautiful when we turn on the lights. We place gifts under the tree. There is a gift for me under the tree. It is wrapped in red paper and it has a big green bow on it. Red and green are the Christmas colors. On Christmas Eve, my brother and sister and I will hang our stockings near the fireplace. Santa Claus comes down the chimney and fills our stockings full of toys and goodies. On Christmas morning, it is exciting to see what Santa has left for you. My mother will make a big turkey dinner for us on Christmas Day. We have lots of vegetables and good-tasting foods to go with the turkey. We will have dessert too. Some of my family like Christmas pudding, but I will just have ice cream. Last year, some carolers came to the door. It was snowing outside. They stood in the snow and sang Christmas carols to us. My father gave them some money, and my mother gave them some hot chocolate to warm them up. They had lovely voices, and they sang some of my favorite carols. We also collect food. Gifts and money for some of the people in town who cannot afford to have Christmas. My family is collecting things for a poor family who live near here. We had fun deciding which toys to buy for the children in that family. It was a good feeling to share with people who do not have as much as you do. My parents have always taught us that Christmas is a time for giving, not receiving. I think they're right. The garden. The garden is very interesting. I sometimes go outside, and I watch all the things that go on in the garden. It smells wonderful in the flower garden. There are red, white, pink, and yellow roses that have a sweet smell. I watch the bees as they take pollen from the roses. There are tiny bugs that live on the rose bushes. My mother tries to get rid of the little bugs, but it is difficult to get rid of them. She is glad to see the red ladybugs who eat the little bugs. The birds like the sunflowers. They like to eat sunflower seeds. There is a bird bath in the garden. 
The blackbirds and swallows go in there to take a drink or have a bath. I sometimes see a robin or a blue jay in there too. In the dirt, there are little holes where the ants go in and out. The ants are hard workers. I watch them as they work together as a team to bring food to their nests. There are snails in the garden too. They carry their homes on their backs. They move slowly and leave a silvery trail as they go. They eat the leaves from my mother's plants. My mother also has vegetables growing in her garden. She grows green peas. We like to pick those and eat the peas raw, right out of their pods. She grows lettuce and tomatoes too. We have so many tomatoes that we always give some to our neighbors. My mother sends us outside to pick lettuce and tomatoes whenever we have a salad. My favorite vegetables are carrots. Their tops grow above the earth, but the carrots are below the dirt. When you pick them, you have to pull the carrots out from under the soil. Weeds also grow in the garden. After a good rainfall, it seems that the weeds just spring up. I pull the weeds out by their roots so they won't grow back. Weeds choke the good plants, so we don't want them in our garden. Gardening is a good hobby. You get fresh air, sunshine, and exercise. You even get beautiful, colorful flowers. And nice fresh food. The pet store. On Saturday, my parents took us to the pet store. They had everything that you would need if you had a pet. They had dog food. Collars and leashes for dogs. They had treats to give your dog and brushes to brush your dog. For cats, they had food, toys, and litter boxes. For birds, they had seed and cages. There was a section for fish. They had fish in big tanks and little bowls. In the big tanks, there were colorful fish swimming around. The girl who worked there said that they were tropical fish. There were goldfish in the smaller fish bowls. I saw the girl get a goldfish out with a little net. She sold it to a boy who said he had another goldfish at home. There was a very large cage with a parrot in it. I walked up to the cage and the parrot said hello. I was surprised that the parrot could talk. It could say a few things. It said, "I love you, pretty bird," and "Bye bye." I told my mother that I would like a parrot, but she said that parrots need a lot of care and attention. At the back of the store, there were some puppies. They seemed glad to see me. I stuck my hand into the cage. And one of them licked my hand. They were very lively. They were running around and chasing their own tails. In the next cage, there were two kittens. One of them was playing with a toy, and the other one was asleep. The kittens were very small. The one that was sleeping was curled up into a ball. I couldn't even see her face. I didn't want to leave the pet store. I was wishing that I could take all of the animals home with me. My first day of school. I remember my first day of school. I was excited, but I was afraid. I held my mother's hand as we walked to the school. When we got near the school, I wouldn't let her hold my hand any more. I didn't want to look like a baby. We got to the school.
the school looked very big and frightening. There were children outside on the playground. They all looked very big. I looked at them, and some of them looked at me. I felt very small. My mother and I went into the school and found the kindergarten room. There were children in there. Most of them were the same size as me. My mother spoke to the kindergarten teacher. The teacher was very nice. She said my name and she introduced me to some of the other children. I already knew some of the children because they lived near me. I began to play with some of the things that were in the classroom. There were toy trucks, coloring books, and even a dollhouse. I soon forgot to be scared, and I began to play with the other children. I didn't even notice that my mother had left the room. In school, we sang songs, played some games, and listened as the teacher read us a story. I had a lot of fun on my first day of school. I even drew a picture of my teacher. I took the picture home, and my mother put it on the refrigerator. I like school. It is a good place to meet new friends and learn all about the world. Transportation. People move from place to place. There are lots of ways you can move around from one place to another. Sometimes you can just move your feet and walk. Walking is good for you. Some places are too far to walk to. You might have to ride a bicycle or ride on a skateboard. Some places are too far away to ride your bicycle to. You might have to drive in a car, or a van, or even a truck. My father has a car. My uncle has a van. I have never been in a big truck. Trucks are usually used to carry big loads from one city to another. I would like to be a truck driver. I would travel all over and sit high up in the cab. I have been in a taxi cab. Once, my mother and I took a taxi to the hospital. There was a special meter in the taxi. When we finished our taxi ride, the driver looked at the meter to find out how much money we owed him. I once rode a horse. I sat in the saddle. And held on tight to the reins, the horse ran very fast. It was a bumpy ride, and I was afraid that I would fall off the horse. Not too many people around here use horses for transportation. They used to use horses for transportation in the old days. If you want to travel very far away, you have to go on a train, a plane, or a boat. If you are in a hurry, it is best to take a plane. Planes fly through the air very fast. Trains go along the tracks. Sometimes I can hear the train whistle from my house. Boats take a long time to cross the ocean. Great big boats that cross the oceans are called ships. If you like to take it easy and look out at the water. Then ships are a good way to travel. They say that the world is a lot smaller now because of transportation. People can travel to all parts of the world quickly and easily. The world is not really smaller, but it has become easy to get to faraway places. Television. Do you watch television? My mother says that I watch too much television. I watch cartoons on Saturday mornings. Cartoons make me laugh. My brother and I each have our favorite cartoons. 
we have trouble deciding which cartoons we will watch. On Saturday afternoons, we like to watch sports. My brother really likes to watch baseball, but usually my mother tells us to go out and play on a Saturday afternoon. On weeknights, we have our own favorite shows. I like shows about outer space and monsters. My brother likes comedies. He likes to laugh. My mother likes shows about real life situations. She likes to watch the news. She says that the news is important. She watches the news and weather to find out what is going on in the world. Sometimes she watches real life shows about doctors or policemen. My father doesn't watch television. He says that he would rather read a good book or the newspaper. My dad gets all his news from the newspaper. My favorite thing is to sit in front of the television with a bag of popcorn and a bottle of pop. I sit there. And change the channels with the remote control. I change channels and watch a few different shows at once. My mother won't let me watch too much television. She doesn't want me to get lazy. Television is good if you don't spend too much time watching it. You can learn a lot from television if you watch the educational channels. I learned about dinosaurs and rainforests last week. Just from watching television. My country. I live in Canada. It is a very large country that is made up of ten provinces and three territories. Most of the provinces and territories are quite unique. For example, in Saskatchewan, the land is flat and it is not surrounded by water. They grow wheat in Saskatchewan. British Columbia has mountains. I have never been to British Columbia, but I hear that it is very beautiful. Nova Scotia is on the Atlantic Ocean, so there are many fishermen out there. The people in the provinces are even different from each other. In Quebec, many of the people speak French. In the Maritime provinces, the people like to play their own kind of music. They play fiddles and accordions, and many of them dance very well. Nunavut is in the north, so life is quite different there. The people who live in the new territory of Nunavut. Are very close to wildlife. They do a lot of hunting and fishing. It can get very cold up in the Arctic, where none of it is. I live in Ontario. Even within Ontario, life can be quite different. The capital of Ontario is Toronto. Toronto is a very busy city with lots of apartments, offices, and shops. Toronto is an exciting place, and it has a lot to offer. There are theaters and restaurants to suit every taste. The culture in Toronto is very diverse. If you drive a few miles north of Toronto, you will find places that are tranquil and peaceful. Many people leave Toronto on the weekends and drive to their cottages, where they find rest and relaxation. Canada is made up of many different cultures. People of many different ethnic backgrounds live in harmony in Canada. That is why I like Canada. In Canada, we celebrate our differences. Food. What kinds of food do you like to eat? I am lucky because in Canada there are many foods to choose from. I like to eat hot dogs, hamburgers, and steak. These are all meat products. I also like cheese, ice cream, and yogurt. 
These are all dairy products. I like vegetables. My favorite vegetables are broccoli, cabbage, carrots, and peas. I eat a lot of fruit. I eat whichever fruit is in season. In strawberry season, I eat a lot of strawberries. In peach season, I eat many peaches. Sometimes my mother will make a peach pie. Many different crops grow in Canada. We have many orchards and farms. Fresh fruit and vegetables are plentiful in Canada. Meat and fish are also plentiful here. In Canada, we have a lot of different foods to choose from. In my city, there are a lot of Italian restaurants. My favorite food at the Italian restaurant is pizza. My parents would rather have spaghetti or lasagna. There are Greek restaurants, Mexican restaurants, and Chinese restaurants. In fact, there are restaurants from most cultures. I can go around from restaurant to restaurant and pretend that I am traveling the world and trying all the different foods from around the world. Sometimes I eat things that aren't good for me. I eat potato chips and candies. These foods aren't part of a nutritious diet, but they are fun to eat. The zoo. My class took a trip to the Toronto Zoo. I had a wonderful time there. My favorite animals were the lions. They look very powerful and strong. They say that the lion is the king of the forest, and I think that title suits him. The monkeys were funny. They were looking at us just as much as we looked at them. They were swinging from branches and doing tricks to impress us. There was a baby monkey that was clinging to its mother's back. It was very cute. The tigers were pacing back and forth. They seemed restless. The stripes on a tiger are very beautiful. We watched the tall giraffes as they nibbled leaves off the tallest trees. We spoke to a colorful parrot. That spoke back to us. We saw exotic animals that we had never seen before. Some of them were very strange. There were different types of bears there. There were black bears. I saw a black bear once when I was camping up north. We saw polar bears. Polar bears are white. They like the cold. We even saw panda bears. One of my friends bought a toy panda bear from the gift shop because she thought that the pandas were so cute. We saw slithery snakes. Some of the snakes had very bright skins. Most of the girls were afraid of the snakes. The zookeeper was looking after the snakes, and one of them hissed at him. He has to be very careful when he works with the snakes. The last thing that we saw at the zoo was the elephant. He was enormous. He looked at us, then he raised his trunk and made a loud sound. It made us jump. The museum. The museum was very interesting. There were so many things in the museum that I would need more time to really see everything. There were clothes from the past. I don't know how people wore some of those things. They look like they would be uncomfortable. I like to wear my jeans. There were things from wars. There were bullets and cannons. And even uniforms from the soldiers. I don't think that war is a good thing, but it is good to remember the past and honor the people who died for your country. There was an old fire truck at the museum. This fire truck was pulled by a horse. There were some very old photographs of the firemen putting out fires. 
There were rooms in the museum that were set up like an old house. There were antique irons and sewing machines. The women used to clean the clothes with a washboard. There were no modern appliances back then. I'm glad that we have electricity and modern appliances. The things that we have make life so much easier. There were mummies from Egypt at the museum. I was fascinated by those. There were artifacts from the Indians. There were arrowheads and cradles that the babies slept in. I tried my best to see everything, but it was almost impossible. The museum is a good place to learn about your past. I tried to imagine my grandparents using some of the things that were on display at the museum. The police. My mother always told me that if I was lost, I could go up to a policeman, and that he would help me to find my way home. I never did get lost, but I always remembered what my mother told me about the police. I think policemen look very nice in their uniforms. I see police officers drive by in their police cars. In my town, we even have police officers on bicycles. Policemen and police women have a job that can sometimes be dangerous. They have to catch people who break the law. Sometimes they have to chase people or try to calm people down. To be a police officer, you need a lot of training. It's important to be able to deal with people effectively. A police officer came to our school. He had a police dog with him. The officer showed us how the dog could track down criminals. The dog was very smart. He could even find things that were hidden. Criminals sometimes hide things that they don't want the police to find. The policeman told us. That he and his dog were partners. His dog lives at his house with the policeman and his family. Sometimes I see police cars on the side of the road. The police stop people who are speeding or are not wearing their seatbelts. The police officers warn people or give out tickets. Sometimes they even have to arrest people. Police officers are just doing their job when they arrest people. Some people need to be arrested and put in jail to make it safer for the rest of us. Pretending. I like to pretend. I like to make up things that aren't real. I use my imagination. I was pretending that I was in a time machine. I set the date for a prehistoric time. I turned on the time machine, and it buzzed and whirred and spun madly. When it stopped spinning, I opened the door and stepped out into a very thick jungle. I listened carefully to the sounds of the jungle. I could hear strange animal noises, and the leaves were rustling. I wasn't sure if I'd gone back in time or had just landed in a jungle somewhere in the 21st century. It didn't take me long to realize that I had indeed gone back in time. A very strange bird-like creature with a large beak flew overhead. I had never seen anything like it in my life. I took a few steps out into the long grass and ferns. I didn't want to go too far away from my time machine. I heard a noise over on my right side. There was a man who looked quite different from me. He was dressed in an animal skin and he carried a big stick. I didn't want him to see me, so I hid behind a tree. He didn't speak any language that I could understand. He grunted at someone who must have been in the distance. Then I felt the earth shake beneath my feet. I heard giant thumps on the ground as the floor of the jungle shook. The man in the animal skin began to run. I saw why he was running. A giant dinosaur appeared above the tops of the trees. It was bigger than anything I had ever seen. 
My heart began to pound in my chest. It was coming toward me. I ran toward my time machine and jumped in. I set the dial for the 21st century. The machine whirred and buzzed. My time machine landed in the 21st century. I got away just in time. A baby. My aunt just had a baby girl. We went to the hospital to visit my aunt and to see the new baby. My aunt was feeling fine, although she was just a bit tired. She walked with us to a big window that had lots of babies behind it. She pointed to a crib with a baby in it. The baby was wrapped in a pink blanket. We all said how pretty the baby looked. I couldn't believe how tiny the baby was. She was asleep, so we couldn't see her eyes. When the baby went home, we went to visit her. We heard the baby. She was crying. My aunt said the baby was hungry. My aunt had a baby bottle full of warm milk. She fed the baby with it. The baby was happy after that. My aunt patted the baby on the back until the baby burped, and then the baby fell asleep. I held the baby. I looked at her tiny fingers and tiny toes. I was very careful with her. She opened her eyes and looked at me. I spoke to the baby, but I knew that she could not understand me. Babies have to learn to walk and talk. My aunt changed the baby. Babies wear diapers, so they need to be changed often. The baby has a lot of toys, but she is still too young to play with them. My aunt says that it won't be long before the baby is crawling and trying to talk. Babies are cute. I have seen pictures of myself when I was a baby, and it's hard to believe that I was once that small. A wedding. The church bells are ringing. I am inside the church, waiting for my cousin to walk down the aisle. Today is her wedding day. She is a bride. The organist is playing a song on the organ. We all stand up and watch my cousin walk down the aisle. She is arm in arm with her father. She is dressed in a long white dress and a veil. She looks so beautiful. She looks like a princess. The man who she is going to marry is standing at the front of the church. He is the groom. He looks nice too. He is wearing a suit and he has a flower in his lapel. The minister says words to the couple, which will make them man and wife. The bride and groom smile at each other, but they seem to be a little bit nervous. They give each other gold rings to wear to symbolize that they are married. They kiss each other and walk out of the church as the organist plays joyous music. Some of the people in the church cried at the wedding, but not because they were sad. Everyone in the church is very happy for the couple. A photographer takes pictures of the happy couple. We wish them well and look forward to the reception where we will have dinner and we will dance and have a good time until it is very late. The bride will throw her bouquet of flowers, and it is said whoever catches the bouquet will be the next bride. The next day, the bride and groom will leave for their honeymoon. My cousin and her husband are going to Mexico for their honeymoon. My dad. My dad is the man whom I respect the most in my life. He works very hard to make the money that supports us. My mother has a job too, and she also works very hard. My dad is the principal of a high school. He works at the school all day and often has to go to meetings at night. He deals with parents, students, and staff. There is always something that he has to deal with. He has a lot on his mind. It doesn't matter how much work my dad has to do. He always has time for my brothers, my sister, and me. If I go to him with a problem, he will sit down and discuss it with me. He doesn't yell. He is always very logical, and he tries to think of the best way to deal with things. My dad is a very patient man. Once I spilled some ink on papers that he was working on. I thought he would be mad, but he didn't get angry. He said it was okay. He takes time out to do things with us. He has taken my brother's fishing. He takes me to the arena to skate, and he helps my sister to write her essays and assignments. He always makes us laugh. And he makes us feel like we are very special to him. 
He is a very good father, and on Father's Day, I always buy him a card that tells him just how much he means to me. I think it is important to have good parents. I hope that when I have children, I will be a good parent like my parents are to me. Parents give children the foundation they need to live good lives. My mother. My mother does so many things. She has a job at a dress store. She cooks our meals. She cleans the house. She feeds the pets, and she still finds time to spend with us. My mother is always busy, but she says that her favorite time is time that she spends with us. My mother works from Monday to Friday. When she comes home from work, she makes something for supper. We usually do the dishes so that she won't have to do them. After supper, she helps us with our homework, or she sits down to watch television. Some nights she goes shopping, and she takes whoever wants to go with her. Mothers are a little bit of everything. My mother is like a teacher when she helps us with our homework. She is like a nurse when she looks after us all when we're ill. She is like a cook when she makes meals for us. She says that cleaning the house is her least favorite thing. She says that the house gets dirty again right after you clean it. She gets my father, my brothers, sister, and me to help her with the cleaning. My mother washes all our clothes, and sometimes she irons them if they need it. My mother says that there are not enough hours in a day. We try to help my mother as much as we can. There is a lot of work involved in keeping a home neat and organized. Most of my friends' mothers work. Mothers are the people who you go to when you need to be comforted. Mothers are the people who can make you feel better. I'm glad that I have the mother that I have. My mother is caring and funny. She is fun to be around. A surprise. Last Friday, my dad came home from work and said that he had a surprise for us. We tried to guess what the surprise might be. My brother guessed that we were going out for dinner. My dad said no. My other brother asked if my father had tickets to a hockey game. My dad said no. My sister asked if we were going on a trip. My dad said no. My mother knew what the surprise was, so she just stood and smiled at us. I guess that we might be getting a swimming pool. My dad said no.、Nope. We were getting very frustrated trying to guess what the surprise might be. My brother asked how big the surprise was. My dad said that the surprise was quite small. We were not sure what the surprise could be. Will we all like it? I asked. Yes, my dad replied. Every one of you will love this surprise. We heard a noise. It was a crying noise. Your surprise wants to see you, my dad said. He opened the door to the bedroom and a tiny puppy came running out. We were all very excited. Our surprise was a puppy. It was a little baby spaniel. The puppy loved all of us. She ran around and licked all of our faces. We had always wanted a dog. We take turns feeding the puppy and taking her out for walks. She is growing quickly and will soon be an adult dog. We all agree that the puppy was the nicest surprise my dad could have given us. Rhyming words. Sometimes my friends and I play a game. It's something we made up, so it doesn't have a name. We like to take words that rhyme. We put them together line by line. Do you get the picture now? We're playing the game, and this is how. I might say I like to drive a car. I really don't like to go very far. If I decide to take a walk, I'd go with a friend so that we could talk. Do you see that these lines rhyme? Play the game if you have the time. We could talk about school or even playing. Do you know what I am saying? Rhyming words is easy to do. It's fun for me. It can be fun for you. Just join in and say something, or make it into a song that you can sing. There are so many words that rhyme with others, like smile and mile, and mothers and brothers. I could spend all day just making up these things. I could let my imagination fly on wings. 
up to the clouds and back to my mind. There are so many rhymes that I can find. There are some words that are hard to find rhymes for. I don't use those words anymore. I like to choose words that are easy to rhyme, like cat and bat, or lime and time. So give it a try. I know you'll have fun. I'll say goodbye. My rhyming is done. Homework. Sometimes my teacher gives us homework. I don't mind doing my homework except when the weather is really nice and all my friends are outside. On those nights, I'd rather be outside with them, so I try to get my homework done quickly. Tonight, I have some English homework. We have been reading a book. We have to read a chapter of the book and answer the questions at the end of the chapter. It is an interesting book, so the homework for this is quite easy. My math homework is not so easy. I have to do some addition and subtraction. I don't mind that, but there are some problems that need to be solved. The problems involve addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I am not too good with numbers. I need to work harder on my math. I just finished a project for history. I had to make a map of Canada with diagrams showing the routes of all the explorers. It was an interesting project because I have been to some of the places that the explorers went to. I don't have any science homework. At school, we are growing bean plants. We go in every day and see how the plants have grown. We write down all the changes that occur in the plant every day. The only other homework that I have is geography. I have a map of Canada, and I have to write the names of all the provinces and their capitals on it. It won't take me long to do that because I know all the provinces. When my homework is all done, I will go outside and play ball with my friends until it is time to come in. I am a good student. I get good marks because I like school. My favorite subjects are physical education, English, and history. Math is my least favorite subject, but I'm trying to improve my marks in that.